Today we're going to make some custom spark plug wires for the Datsun. Here's how the current wires are set up. What I'd like to do is just clean up this valve cover a little bit. What I'm going to do is try to route the wires down the side of the head here, and then around the front of the valve cover, and then over to the distributor. So the wires I'm going to be working with today are these Cassell Super Stock wires. They're an 8mm silicone coated uh, spark plug wire. I've used these before in another car, I had really good luck with them, um, and so we're going to try them again today. The way that these universal kits work is they have one end that has, is ready to go onto the spark plug wires, and then on the other end it is custom fit to your distributor. Um, and so depending on the type of distributor you have, they give you two different types of options for the boots. So you cut these to a custom length, you can fit on the plug ends to attach it to your distributor. I also bought some wire dividers and separators. What these will do is help route the wires the way I'd like them to go, and it'll just clean up the look of the engine a lot. And I also picked up a set of wire crimpers, and those will help attach all of the plug-in connectors to the wires. So what we're gonna do first is measure out all the wires and see what fits, and then start cutting. I'm also going to be replacing this fuel rail, the stock fuel rail, with a, um, a very clean billet fuel rail. Uh, but to do that, I need to put in a fuel pressure regulator and probably switch to some AN fitting. So I'm going to do that at another time. Um, but for right now, we're going to start getting the wires out of play. Now, I think what I'm going to do is actually get the wires to route right here in front of the valve cover. Um, and so I may use this bracket that we're using for the fuel line in the future to actually hold on to these wires. But in the meantime, I'm just going to get them nicely tucked around the valve cover. Now the way I'm going to do this is by detaching one spark plug wire at a time. This way I don't mess up the order on the distributor. Uh, I'm going to start with the longest wire and attach it to the spark plug and then start routing it back and around and see how much room I have and how long this needs to be. This actually gives us plenty of length. I have almost a foot and a half extra to get to the number six cylinder. So here are the first three new wires routed. I haven't cut the ends yet. I'm going to uh, get those little dividers put on them first. This way they should stay where I placed them. And then uh, when I cut the ends, it should be a little bit more precise. So what I've done here is align all the wires so they lay on top of each other in the correct order that they have to go. And now I can actually take decent measurements and figure out um, how short we need to cut these back. What I'm doing is setting the terminal end into the distributor and then routing this wire the way I think it needs to go, trying to take into account the boot that has to go on it and marking a small little mark right here, this last one, just at the edge where this part of the terminal is going to attach to. And then I'm going to space back about 5 eighths of an inch cut this wire off back here, and then strip the 5 eighths off so it'll be even with that black mark right there. So here's about 5 eighths from that black mark. And we'll strip this back from the black mark.
here's a little extra fiberglass or whatever this isolator is. So I'm going to just cut that back. And we're left with the raw end of the wire. And then what you do is bend this. Well, first off, we're just going to double check where it's going to sit. We're going to put the boot on. Probably should have done this before we bent that wire. it's actually easier to preload it into the crimping tool. Then we'll slide the boot over and be ready to install. Okay, so there are the new wires installed. The kit that I got didn't have an ignition coil wire that would work. Um, the wire works, but I don't have the correct end for this flamethrower uh, Protronics um, ignition coil. So we'll keep that one on there for now. In the meantime, I'll, I'll get an end for it and finish that up. Uh, but you can see how much it clears off the top of the valve cover. And that's how all the wires organize on the side. I'm going to clean these up a little bit, put some more wire um, more wire dividers on them just to keep it nice and organized um, and then we'll be pretty much done with this uh, and then once the fuel rail gets swapped out we'll have a little bit more um, attachment points for this I'm gonna just temporarily zip tie it to the fuel rail for now and then we'll make a more permanent solution later on uh, but otherwise that's uh, pretty much how it's gonna look now the reason that I'm doing this primarily is I want to swap out this valve cover um, I have an old one sitting in my garage over there and I'm actually going to smooth it out. I'm gonna weld and fill in these holes from where the old spark plug wires held and I'm going to um, grind all this smooth and then I'm gonna get it powder coated the same bronze color that the wheels are done. The powder coating of the valve cover will happen on a future video. I have a few other parts that I'd like to get done at the same time so we'll do them all together. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the breather pipe here or move it, but for now, those bolt mounts are shaved down, so let's weld up these holes. Let's see how bad my TIG welding is. I fill the holes with more weld than necessary, and then I file and grind them flat. I do this a few times to make sure there's no pinholes. However, if there are any, I can repair them with some high heat JB weld before it goes off to powder coating. As we watch the table smolder, we're going to finish this up later, since we're waiting for the powder coating anyway, and we'll switch over to working on the brakes. So ever since we got the car back from getting the engine put in, we've had a issue with the brakes where when I press on the brakes I have no pedal all the way to the very end and then I just start to get a little bit of braking power. So I'm going to get out of the car and see if we have a leak somewhere. So 
So after a bunch of searching around in the front of the car, I couldn't find anything, so I finally moved the car forward out of the garage and I found one tiny wet spot where the passenger rear tire was. The culprit is a leaky wheel cylinder. So let's get this wheel off and put a new wheel cylinder in. I could not get this drum hat free. I'll spare you the hour plus of banging on it with hammers and I'll skip to when I remember that heat is our friend and I used a torch to heat up the aluminum drum and it just basically popped off on its own. Now that I have that off, I'll disconnect the brake fluid line going to the cylinder and then unbolt the wheel cylinder itself. This is a pretty straightforward process. Here's the old wheel cylinder and the new part. Get this uh, popped in there and hopefully ready to roll. I reinstall the wheel cylinder and then we bleed the system out. The wife came out to lend me a leg. Then a quick cleanup of the wheel and reinstall. Okay, that's it for this video. Next up on the Datsun is the seat cover installation. Then we'll be over to the 1950 Buick to install an EFI system. Please be sure to tell your mom to like and subscribe, and see you next time.